So I actually gave this talk a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, to uh, Leadership Parksville. They asked me to speak at Health Day. Um, and it went over pretty well. People enjoyed it. It was kind of eye-opening a little bit to them. So I decided just to give it again. And uh, if you've heard me talk before, it's a little bit of an overlap, but a couple of new things. Uh, but today I'm just going to talk about integrated healthcare. Um, as you, yeah, go ahead. And, and not to cut Dr. Rips off, but we're both Leadership Parksville graduates. It's a course that I can highly recommend for anybody in this room. Uh, Sure. Oh, yeah, it's, it's we great. We all know that class 2016 was the best class. 15. Uh, 15. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay, you can go ahead and go. Oh, yeah, I got it. Never mind. Yeah, you got it. That's me. Uh, so, what we're going to talk about first off is just going to be a big overview picture of what health is, uh, just a snapshot of that, uh, why we need to integrate our different disciplines of healthcare. Then, we're going to our current healthcare system. Then we're going to give an example on uh, basically pain management, spinal pain, because that's a big issue these days. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit more about integration. So what is health? Uh, health is not the absence of disease or illness, but it's actual optimal physical, mental, and social well-being. Uh, so basically, what we have found that 80% of your health is determined by you, uh, not the doctor. So you have to take responsibility for your health first. and. Every time you put a piece of food in your mouth, every time you decide to exercise or not, or where you decide to uh, perform some sort of stress relief, whether it's praying or yoga or meditation, whatever it may be, those daily choices directly affect if you're going to be functioning optimally or, or are you going to be a little bit closer to being sick and ultimately, uh, it's kind of bad to say, but death. Um, so those choices are yours. 80% of your health is your decision and your responsibility. Uh, doctors help you get out of those binds but and are supposed to teach you how to lead a more optimal healthy life but um, we have to kind of transition the responsibility back onto the individual health so that's health in the nutshell so why do we need to uh, need to integrate why do we need to have medical doctors chiropractors acupuncture physical therapists all these different disciplines working together um, basically it, it, it comes to, to cost um, to, to the business side of things, our, our healthcare system's tanking. Um, and we're going to use spinal pain as an example of this as we get into it. So, like I said, it's cost. Uh, we spent, what, 17.8% of our GDP in 2015 on healthcare. Really, it's about twice as much as any other uh, industrialized nation in the world. So, we're spending way more money on healthcare costs but we're not getting a return. So we are 28th of the industrialized nations as far as just overall health. And there's a myriad of factors that go into that. Um, they list disease, suicide rates, road injuries, smoking, water quality. There's a lot of different factors that go into ranking a nation as far as their health goes. So if we were spending 17.8% of our gross domestic product on healthcare, and we were number one and just killing it, you know, if we were living 110 years old with no chronic disease, and the other average country was maybe living to 75 with chronic disease, well, okay, maybe that's worth it. Uh, but when we're spending more than twice as much money on healthcare and we're you know, almost last, that's not a business model that works, essentially. So my example, I'm gonna funnel down into spinal pain integration now. So that's the, the big picture. So now let's look into spinal pain because uh, the opioid epidemic right now is, is crazy. More people die each year from properly prescribed uh, prescription medications than all the illicit drugs combined. So we don't really have a heroin or marijuana problem, <laughs> we have a painkiller problem. Uh, so that's why we need to integrate and figure out the best solutions for people that have these kind of chronic conditions. So I'm gonna give you some stats first on spine pain. Uh, 31 million Americans have low back pain at any given time. It's the single leading cause of disability worldwide. Uh, one half of all working Americans uh, have back pain symptoms each year. It's the most common, one of the most common reasons for missed work. The only thing that beats it out is an upper respiratory uh, tract infection. We spend about $50 billion each year on back pain and about 80% of the population will experience back problems at some point in their life. So it's a big deal. It's, it's, a, it's a big burden on the healthcare system. So let's shift gears to the opioid epidemic. I kind of alluded to that earlier. Uh, but majority of drug overdose deaths, six out of 10 involve some sort of opioid. Uh, since 1999, the number of overdose deaths involving opioids have quadrupled and that includes prescription uh, opioids and heroin. 
From 2000 to 2015, uh, more than half a million people died from drug overdoses. 91 Americans die every day from opioid overdose. Since 1999, the amount of prescription opioids sold in the U.S. nearly quadrupled, yet there has not been a decrease in pain. So we've you know, increased our prescription by four times, but nothing's changed. Deaths from prescription opioids like oxycodone, hydrocodone, and methadone have more than quadrupled since 1999. Again, we're prescribing, 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 but nothing's changing. Which I think is the definition of insanity, right? Mm -hmm. you know, do the same thing, but expect a different yeah. result. So what's your options for spinal pain? Really, the, the big two is you go to your MD or DO and drug surgery or physical therapy, um, or really a doctor of chiropractic, which we're you know, highly trained in, in spinal conditions which we typically do many manipulation rehab, and a lot of us do acupuncture. So let's talk about cost um, and results. So this is for people that get hurt at work, um, a work comp injury, your likelihood of having a back surgery after a work comp injury. If you go to a medical doctor first, you have a 42.7% chance of having a back surgery. But if you go to a chiropractor first and go under a chiropractic point of care, you have about a 1.5% chance of surgery. And then costs were about 20% less overall on your overall healthcare bill. Um, and we have less surgery and usually you know, better results overall. So we have good results and it costs less money. Now I'd like to use the VA because I think the VA is really starting to do a pretty good job. Definitely, you know, it hits home in our area because we have so many veterans that live in Clarksville. And I talk to a lot of my patients that are VA and they, they talk about the, the guys that have, or on opioids and it's basically a gateway drug to heroin because once they can't get the opioid they don't know what to do so then they start buying heroin to try to decrease the pain um, so what they're doing uh, the VA they're really starting to use integrated health care and it's great it's phenomenal uh, they refer for chiropractic and they refer for acupuncture and we're getting great results with it uh, so basically the VA uses uh, chiropractors as a neuromusculoskeletal specialist they refer to us when they think the, the the patient's non-surgical or um, with the state and federal guidelines now on opioid prescription, they're having to do more conservative management uh, before they're even allowed to prescribe an opioid. So they, they go to us first. Um, so we just pro pro uh, provide different services, like you said, for manipulation, rehab, acupuncture, uh, those types of services. So what it boils down to is just we all need to work together. The big big problem in our healthcare system today is just we don't know what each other does. Uh, there's a big misconception of, um, of what different doctors do and what other doctors can even help with. I mean, a lot of people uh, don't even realize that you know I can help with neck pain. You know, this just kind of blows my mind sometimes. But there's just a, a big communication gap between the different disciplines in healthcare. Um, eight minutes, right? Um, there was a saying that one of my professors said in school and it really made a lot of sense to me and I think if we were to follow it we would save a lot of money and we have a lot better results for our patients and that is we just need to provide the right care from the right doctor at the right time. Uh, obviously if you're in a motor vehicle accident and you may have a brain bleed, don't come to me. I'm not the doctor for you. <laughs> Go to the emergency department, make sure your life is going to be saved. And then a week later, you know, if you're having neck pain and that sort of thing, then I'm the right doctor, the right doctor for you at the right time. So it's learning how to work together and knowing what each one does best to provide the best care for the patient. And it boils down to doctor means teacher. That's what the, the Greek word means, um, it's just to teach. Uh, and I think that's where sometimes we fall short as uh, physicians is that we don't teach enough. And that's what doctor literally means. So, I mean, I, that's where I say this is where we need to be more accountable and, you know, just not doing the quick fix, but really trying to educate people on how to prevent this type of situation and to boost quality of life. Um, that's all I have. It's a pretty quick presentation, short and sweet to the point. But does anyone have any questions about Pearson's CJ? What, uh, what's your opinion on CBD oil that is now available for pain management? Uh, I think it'd be very effective. The big thing is just the walls to be able to use it. Um, I've had a, a patient, we were just talking, and she goes to her primary care, and I, I can't remember if it's, if she can't get it in Tennessee, but she is getting it in Tennessee, the patient is, but the doctor knows about it, and the doctor believes that, yeah, this is great, you need to keep doing it, but she can't really 
you know, give advice on it. And so I think it's a, I think it really is a great oil. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually within Chinese medicine. It's been around for about 4,000 years. It's nothing new. It's just something that we rediscovered, really. Uh, so I think it's phenomenal. Uh, the problem is now they're making synthetic CBD oil, which is not the same as the real stuff. Uh, so a lot of it, I think, breaks down to just healthcare law and what, you know, doctors don't want to get in trouble, <laughs> you know, as far as uh, what they're doing. So, um, but yeah, I think it, it can be a really effective tool for people with chronic pain and even like seizures and that kind of thing. Uh, did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. okay. It is available in Pepsi. Okay, okay, thanks. Now, what you do, uh, are you able to work with the nerves at all? Work with the nerves? Nerves. Nerves, nerves. oh. Uh, are you talking about like fibromyalgia or? Uh, just like over, uh, overstimulated nerves, maybe due to uh, pressure and pricking of joints and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I've, I have found just with experience acupuncture, if, if they're overstimulated and they can't handle like manipulation or that kind of thing, I've found acupuncture to be extremely effective. Um, I just had a new patient start last week that um, he has two fusions, one in his neck, a little bit. He's, he's a VA patient. Um, and he has fasciculations or cramping um, just randomly in all of his muscles throughout his body. He can't sleep more than two hours at night without waking up because of the cramping. And we tried acupuncture, I didn't know if it was going to be beneficial or not, and he said he slept two nights in a row without any muscle cramping or pain. So, um, it's, you know, some of the stuff, changed like, I don't mean, what's that? You changed his life. Yeah, I mean, he was just so, like, this is the first time he's ever done acupuncture, and he was just, he's like, get me on the table, get me out of pain. I mean, yeah. it, it came back up a little bit, and that's the normal cycle of things. You're not going to just get rid of them in one visit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, some of the stuff just... You know, a lot of this stuff is 4,000 years old. I mean, chiropractic is really 4,000 years old. It was called bone setting back in Eastern medicine. Chiropractic is nothing new. It's just we rediscovered it over here in the United States. It was part of the Eastern medical model way back when. So, uh, but yeah, absolutely. What about sciatic nerves? Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I've had some. I've been the last few weeks, so. Yeah. I believe the proper pronunciation of it is psychotic nerves. <laughs> it will make you psychotic. Yeah, it's all the stress you're under it's right now. It's just all the stress. It's going to your bed. Yeah, I know. yeah, that's no kidding. Was that 12? Yes. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any other questions, just ask me after class or after class. <laughs> 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 <laughs>